In this video, we're looking at the second part of the electromagnetic spectrum. We're going to cover ultraviolet, X-rays and gamma rays. By the end, you'll be able to state the use of UV, X-rays and gamma rays. You'll be able to give brief explanations of why each type of electromagnetic wave is suitable for what it's used for. You'll understand that changes in the atom produce gamma radiation. You'll be able to explain why each type of radiation is a risk to health. You'll be able to use data on dosage to evaluate the risk posed by each type of radiation. So last time we looked at visible, infrared, microwave and radio waves. None of those have enough energy to ionise atoms and cells. But as you go on to ultraviolet, x-rays and gamma rays, they're carrying more energy because they have a high frequency and so they can ionise cells, which increases your risk of cancer. So what is ionisation? Well, here we have a neutral atom. We've got three negative electrons and three positive protons cancelling each other out. Here comes our radiation. And as it comes in, it's got enough energy to knock out an electron. So we've now got a negative electron. We've also now got a positive ion because we've got three positives and two negatives. So we have ionised the atom and that's what ionisation is. So ionisation can damage DNA which cause mutations in cells and in genes which can cause cancer. So there are a number of things that can happen when cells are damaged and the DNA is damaged. One, it can die. It can repair itself. And if it repairs itself accurately, then it carries on as a normal cell. If it doesn't repair itself accurately, then it can lead to cancerous cells. So let's have a look at uses of ultraviolet waves. Well, the first one is bank security nodes. So bank security nodes have pigments in which absorb the UV and emit visible light. These figures here can only be seen under UV light. You can see them there. Secondly, energy saving light bulbs, uh, fluorescent tubes, uh, use UV. Now, of course, they don't produce UV out because they produce visible light. So how do they work? Well, they're coated in a white phosphor coating. And inside, they've got mercury vapour. And what happens is the mercury vapour emits ultraviolet light, and then the white phosphorus coating absorbs that ultraviolet light and emits visible light. Watch this animation here. So there you've got your UV, which turns into visible light, and it's emitted. So those are two key uses of UV. The other one, of course, is UV can also be emitted from sunbeds if you don't have the coating on to produce the visible light. But there are, of course, risks as well to um, sunbathing like that. The key one is skin cancer. It's really important that you mention the word skin cancer because ultraviolet radiation cannot penetrate deep into tissue only on the surface, which means that it causes skin cancer rather than cancers deeper inside the body. The other thing you need to know is that UV radiation causes skin aging prematurely. You can see this person has been sunbathing uh, for most of their life. Moving on to even higher energies in UV, we're going up in frequency, we've got X-rays. They're much more penetrating than UV, that only go uh, through the surface, but don't go deep into the body. So X-rays, of course, popular one, is they're used to see fractures and breaks in bones. So how do they work? Well, the X-rays are transmitted, that means pass through the soft tissue, but get absorbed by the bone. At the back, you will have a film or a digital detector that will absorb those x-rays and so where they get through the soft tissue they expose the film. But there's an issue of course. We know that x-rays are ionizing and so they cause mutations which can lead to cancer. So why do we use x-rays? So the key thing is do the benefits of using x-rays outweigh the risks? I like this 
example because in the 1930s and 40s they used to use x-rays to see whether children's feet fitted inside their shoes. They were banned in the late 1950s when they realised that x-rays were harming. Now the important thing is that you don't need to use x-rays to see whether shoes fit. So the risks way outweigh the benefits. So you wouldn't use it. So for an x-ray, the benefits of getting your bone uh, mended um, way outweigh the very, very, very small risk of increasing a risk of developing cancer. We can also use x-rays for killing cancer cells if we use a high enough dose. The x-rays are produced here and they pass through the body to the tumour. So how do they make sure that the tumour gets a very high dose of x-rays but the healthy cells don't? Well, what they do is they rotate the machine around the body. And as you look here, those x-rays are continually fired at different points. And you'll notice that the central point here where the tumour is gets a high amount of x-rays but the healthy cells around get a low dose of x-rays. So, so the risk of increasing the risk of developing cancers uh, rather than treating that cancer is very low. Finally, we're moving on to gamma rays, which have an even higher frequency, so therefore carry even more energy. And they're used for two things, like x-rays. They're used to build up images of the body, but a different way, and also used to treat cancer cells. So how do we use gamma rays to actually produce an image? It's important to know that you don't have to know this in any detail, you just have to appreciate that they produce images. So we have thyroid gland here, which absorbs iodine. And what they do is they inject a, a, an isotope of iodine into your body, which gives off gamma radiation. That collects in the thyroid over a few hours and your thyroid starts to give out gamma radiation. And that gamma radiation is detected by a gamma camera because the gamma rays can be transmitted through your body and out to the camera. Now, you can see this is an image here. This is a perfectly functioning thyroid. You can see there's a lot of gamma radiation being given off, so that thyroid absorbed the iodine. Whereas the function of the thyroid on this side is not as good. It hasn't absorbed so much of the, of the iodine because it's not giving off gamma radiation. So the gamma rays are being used to image things within the body. And finally, they can also be used to kill cancer cells, just like x-rays, directing them just at the cancer so that those cells can be killed, whereas the healthy cells um, are left with a low dose. Do the benefits outweigh the risks? Yes, because if you have cancer, then the risk of that not being treated is far higher than the very, very minimal risk of having some of the health cells around developing cancer because you've ionised them. So the next statement, understand that changes in the atom produce gamma radiation, also goes back to the radioactive unit four in physics. Here we have our nucleus, and here we have the electrons orbiting the nucleus in energy levels. The only thing you need to know is that electrons uh, can fall from a higher energy level to a lower energy level, and when they do that, they emit radiation in the gamma spectrum. Have a look at that one more time. So, the electron falls to a lower energy level, losing energy, and that gets transferred into gamma radiation. So how do we assess risk? Well, the effects of being exposed to ionising radiation depend on the following thing. The type of radiation used. So remember, ultraviolet has a lower frequency than gamma, so it doesn't carry as much energy. But it also depends on the dose, and that will depend on how much you're exposed to, how much energy that radiation is carrying, and of course, how long you're exposed to it for. So if you have a short x-ray, that's not going to give as much risk as having a much longer x-ray. Radiation dose is measured in sieverts, um, and it's a measure of the risk of harm resulting from an exposure of the body to radiation. Radiation dose is measured in millisieverts, 
and there are a thousand millisieverts in one sievert. Um, that is a massive dose, that's why we measure it in millisieverts. Now, students are not required to remember the unit of radiation dose, but what you are asked to do is this. You should be able to draw conclusions from given data about the risk and consequences of exposure to radiation. We now will have a look at one or two questions in which towards the end you'll see how the exam board might test this. So, figure two shows an x-ray of an arm with a broken bone. Describe how x-rays are able to produce an image of bones. Pause the video, think about key words that you're going to use, it's worth three marks. So the first thing is x-rays are absorbed by the bone. So the second thing is x-rays are transmitted through the soft tissue. They pass through the soft tissue. And of course, how will they be detected? They're absorbed by the film which detects them. Have a read through these, pause the video and have a go. So state one hazard, uh, be careful, you've got to have said skin cancer, not cancer, or you could have had premature aging of the skin. State one of the medical use of x-rays. Well, taking pictures of broken bones, or you could have had treating cancer. Why are x-rays shootable for the property? Well, if you're taking pictures, then it means that's because they're absorbed by bone. If you're said treating cancer, then of course x-rays kill cancer cells by ionisation. That's why their property can be used for that. So this is a question which starts to have a look at dosage. So it says, a scientist measures the radiation dose that a person received at different distances from an x-ray machine. You can see the distance is going up in regular intervals. This is the dosage in millisieverts and they've tested it three times and then taken the mean dose. First question is, calculate the value x in the table. Have a go at that first. So of course you're calculating the mean, so you're adding them up and then you're dividing by 3 and you get uh, 0.038. The next question, a student makes the following conclusion. As the distance from the machine increases, the dose decreases, they are directly proportional. Is the student correct? Justify your answer. So pause the video again and answer that question. Well, of course, the student is half right. So I've said the student is correct in saying the distance increases, the dosage decreases. But they're not right in directly proportional because, of course, as one goes up, the other goes down. So they cannot be directly proportional. I'll read the second part of the question and then we'll go through the answers. So the first part is just a maths question. They're testing your maths skills and it's just the total dosage divided by the dosage per day will give you 15 days. The second part is suggest why doctors, so that means they're not expecting you to have been taught the answer, they're expecting you to use your common sense. So why x-rays are used, although they increase cancer, so you've got to say the benefits of being treated outweigh the risks. Finally on this one, we've got a percentage question, testing that you can work out percentages. Have a go. So we want to know 40% of 20. The easiest way to do that is think of 40% as 0.4 in a decimal. So it's 0.4 of 20, which is just eight milliseconds. So I've chosen this question because it asks you to prove that something is directly proportional. Now they could ask you this in a biology question, a physics question, or a chemistry question. This is higher level. You'll notice that you're not doubling something each time because that's the easier approach because if you double one thing the other one will double if it's directly proportional but this is a more challenging one to answer 
The question is saying a student suggests that the X-ray dose and the time it would take to get the same dose from background radiation are directly proportional. And it asks you to use calculations to test this suggestion and state your conclusion. So to help you out before you have a go at this yourself, I want to just explain to you something in maths. We know that if y is directly proportional to x, we get a straight line going through the origin, where m is the gradient. So we've got the equation y equals mx. Now if I rearrange that by taking m to the other side by dividing it, we've got y divided by x equals m. And for all these points, m is constant. It is the gradient. So for any point on here, y divided by x will always equal m. So what you need to do is think you've got three points, which if you plot them on a graph, would give you a straight line going to the origin. See if you can use this idea to work out and to prove that these are or are not directly proportional to each other. Look carefully at these units, one's in years, the other two are in months. One variable divided by the other is a constant. So 9 divided by 36 months, because it's 3 years, gives us 0 0.25. 0 0.5 divided by 2 gives us 0 0.25, and 4 divided by 16 gives us 0 0.25. So we have proved that the dose is directly proportional because one divided by other is always a constant value. I hope that technique has helped. So, in this lesson, we've looked at being able to state the use of UV, X-rays and gamma rays. We've been able to give brief explanations of why each type of electromagnetic wave is suitable for what it's used for. We've looked at how changes in the atom by the electrons falling down energy levels emits gamma radiation. We've been able to explain why each type of radiation is a risk to health because of ionisation. And we've looked at how we measure dose and how we could use data in a question to look at the risk posed by radiation. That's the last lesson on waves for those doing combined science. For those going on to triple science, then we have uh, two more lessons. One is on lenses and how we use lenses. And the second one is on black body radiation.